Second, then the money, 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 money. We can talk some business if it's worth it. Ain't no question. I want money, 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 money. What's up, y'all? Chris and Walter from the Boss Truck Couple. Listen, we get a lot of comments and a lot of questions from people that are interested in coming into the box truck business. People want to know the best cost-effective vehicles to come into the business. So today we're going to discuss five areas that we feel you need to know. Get ready, let's get into it. Many times we talk to people who have previous experience in the trucking industry and a lot of times they are drivers that already have their CDL but they work for larger companies and are looking to start their own business. That's why we felt this video would be super important because the decision becomes, do I choose between a box truck and a tractor trailer like the one behind me? Whether you're a CDL holder or a non-CDL holder, you always want to make the best decision possible for your box truck. If though you're a CDL holder, if you decide to get a box truck 26,000 pounds or less as far as gross vehicle weight, you can drive a truck without all the limitations that having a CL, CDL can bring, like IFTA and the Drug Consortium, to name a few. If you're in a non-CDL box truck, those areas are not applicable to you. CDL holders may be interested also in getting their own tractor trailer. Now, power only is simply what it sounds like. You only invest in the tractor trailer. What that means is that you bobtail into each location to pick up a trailer full of merchandise and deliver it to the next location. The next area that we want to talk about is specifically for CDL holders. Now maybe you want to be under the CDL rules and regulations because you want to carry more weight. CDL holders will purchase a truck that has a gross vehicle weight of 33,000 pounds or less versus the non-CDL holder who can carry 26,000 pounds or less. Now a CDL holder box truck is a 28 foot box truck and it's an absolutely great niche to be in because as you heard before you can carry more weight but you also have more length on your truck. So that's two extra feet to carry all the loads that you need to. You can put a full load in some cases in addition to a partial load or you can put several partial loads on your truck. This size load allows truck drivers to take advantage of 24 or 26 foot box trucks that don't require a seal. Then you can put extra merchandise on the truck. Now that we talked about the difference between box trucks and power only vehicles, before we get into the next section, I wanted to talk numbers. My good friends over at Dispatch Experts help me to understand the type of money you can make between the two using their service. Now, this isn't a guarantee for every truck. Where you're willing to go and how long you're willing to be on the road and also the size of your vehicle will determine how much money you can make on the road. But wouldn't you rather have somebody that's helping you to make the most out of your truck, find loads for your vehicle? I know I would. So at Dispatch Experts, the highest grossing over the road box truck drivers made on average between 5,300 and 5,500 per week with a single truck. For power only operations, they average between 6,700 and 7,000 per week per truck. Now both of those are good numbers and those numbers will help you determine which is the better route for you, especially if you're a CDL holder. Maybe you don't want to be um, in, a, in a CDL truck with all the rules and regulations, or maybe you do. You don't mind, you want that additional weight, the bigger truck, then that those numbers will help you to make a decision on which route you want to go. So babe, a lot of people ask, is it worth it to take a 26 or a 24 foot box truck and turn it into a sleep? What do you think? All depends on what you want to do. That's what I think. 
Over the road, it'll be real good if you can keep the 26 and still have a sleeper. But sometimes you can't do that. Yes, yeah, true. Now the load take the load requires a 26 foot truck. And if you ain't got a sleeper on your 26 foot box truck, I mean, you know. This ain't gonna work. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's real convenient to have the sleeper, no doubt. But if you take the two feet off of that space, then you're missing out on a lot of money, right? Well, you're missing out on some loads, yeah. Yeah. You're missing out on some loads. So. But, you know, I be thinking sometimes it might just even on that. Because when I go pay for a hotel, unless you got AARP, like I do. You have to pay the full amount. Yeah. Yeah. It could still be expensive to pay for hotels, though. So, ultimately, the choice would be up to you. But if you think about it, you have to really weigh the convenience and the profitability of your truck. So, that's something for you guys to think about and consider. Weigh the convenience of having the sleeper versus the profitability of having more space on your truck. So while we're talking about profitability of your truck, let's talk about size of your truck. There can be limitations of, box, of your box truck loads if you purchase a truck under 24 feet. So why is that? The reason that there can be limitations to the loads that you're able to carry is a lot of the loads out here, but keep in mind, box trucks are really carrying the less than truck load freight that 53 footers are not able to carry. So the height, weight, and width of the product really matters. The convenience of using a box truck over the road is to have a truck big enough to fit the freight that needs to be carried from shipper to receiver. You don't want to limit yourself to particular loads if you don't have the length of, um, of cargo space that you need. And so what we're seeing out here is a lot of trucks that are under 24 feet while they're good for the local deliveries and things like that, they're not as profitable when it comes to running loads over the road. Make it do with either local loads only or shorter loads or partial loads. While they do pay, they don't pay as well as loads that are going a farther distance or loads that can carry more weight. Yeah, they don't have a uh got more cargo space, you know what I'm talking about? You got more cargo space, and you can, so therefore you get more money for more space. <laughs> and, then, and then with the uh, box so like you said, you know, you can carry multiple loads and make more money. You know, you can have different drops. You can have a load in the, in the, in the nose of the truck. That, that's gonna be your last drop off. Then you can have one before that that could come from another place that you have to deliver at a certain time. You know, you can have multiple loads on that on that box truck and make more money. So I think having a 26 foot box truck, you know, yeah, it's more profitable. Yeah. All right, y'all, so we've reached the end of this video. This was just a quick overview of every area that we have uh, gotten a lot of interest in in the last few weeks. We wanted to touch on the importance of making the right decision when it comes to purchasing the vehicle that's going to help you to maximize your profits when starting your box truck business. So we hope it's been informative. If you'd like to see us dig a little deeper and uh, make a, a longer video about any one of those areas, make sure you put it in the comment section below. Uh, anything else, babe? No, I think that about wraps it up. All right, well, we're gonna get on down the road. Thanks so much for tuning in and we'll see you in the next video. Bob Truck Coke, God, first time to say, the money, 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 money. Let's go. Fox truck, couple guy, first family.
we shaking, then the money, 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 money We can talk some business if it's worth it, ain't no question I want money, 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 money,